making up for the past mistakes of Son of Godzilla and remaking one of the most epic Godzilla films of the Showa era. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2 blends two Godzilla stories without making the film feel bloated. Originally, the film was supposed to be the last in the Heisei series due to the passing, unfortunately, of Ishiro Honda. And to avoid the competition of the remake that was drawing closer, this was not the end of the Heisei series, because more kaiju carnage. Focusing on a message of life versus artificial life, and man versus nature, and how, no matter how dark things get, life always prevails. The year is 1992. Mecha King Ghidorah has been salvaged to create G-Force's Mecha Godzilla to defend Japan from Godzilla's terror. Two years have passed and a research team is sent to Adona Island. It is there they discover a prehistoric egg. In doing so, the egg is brought back, but one thing to know is that this offspring belongs to Godzilla, and he is strife with fury. Onward through chaotic abolition, Godzilla searches for his son, engulfing Tokyo in flames, leading to the final confrontation with Mechagodzilla that will decide his fate. The director's chair had once again changed and Kazuki Amori was nowhere to be seen. He was now replaced by Takao Okawara. But make no mistake, this does not hinder the film. If anything, it's a step up from the previous installment. Akira Ifakube returns again with an enchanting score that harkens back to previous scores of the Showa era, with Rodan's theme being a core memory. Special effects master Koichi Kawakita returns delivering astonishing practical effects. Although, as I said in my last review, this film relies heavily on beam spamming. But to be honest, the beam lock between Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla is magnificent and is reminiscent of the original 1974 film, so I'm going to give it a pass. Mechagodzilla's design with the enhancement of Garuda is dazzling. The only complaint I have is with his feet. I don't feel that they quite match with the rest of his body, and they ruin an almost flawless design. If I were to make any changes... To give it a more jagged pronunciation to match with Heisei Goji, but it's a minor gripe. Also, let's not forget Rodan's design. This is a major upgrade from the Showa era, resembling an actual pterodactyl, and there were no suit actors for this version. His relationship with Godzilla is extremely enigmatic. In the film, once trying to eliminate his foe, and next, a sacrifice so Godzilla can raise baby, a truly noble last act. The relationship between baby and Azusa tugs at your emotion. The separation at the end is heartbreaking, but must be done so father and son can be reunited. As many positives as this film has going for it, there are some negatives like the one American that acts like he's reading the script right in front of him. And as much as I love Masahiro Takashima as a leading protagonist, his English translation was just plain bad. This movie is my childhood. It is what really got me into Godzilla. You see Godzilla as an anti-hero, as a father, a destroyer. The kaiju battles between Rodan, Godzilla, and Mecha Godzilla left lasting impressions. There is so much to love about this film. Due to the controversy of Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, this film did not see a release in America until 1998. Now, this is all possible speculation. Others believe that they couldn't find a distributor. It's hard to tell. But the only way that you were able to watch this film is if you knew somebody that was from Japan that would bring it to a comic book shop. And that's how I saw Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, was at a comic book shop and when they would have Godzilla Fest. Something else I found interesting was that Trend Masters made toys for these characters, but yet the films never made it to North America. 
I just thought that was funny is that Trend Masters would have these commercials with Godzilla fighting Mecha Godzilla, and I'm like, where did this variant of Mecha Godzilla come from? Where did he come from? I, I just always thought that was funny is that they had the toys, but the movies weren't nowhere to be seen. My friends, I believe this film is worth your time because the characters are well written, the kaiju battles are breathtaking, and the relationship between father and son brings peace to the soul and gives new meaning to life. I give this film 4 out of 5 stars. Thank you for watching and if you like what you see, hit that like button and subscribe to the Oblivion of Madness.